Hello, you are watching a replay of the Facebook Live, and today my guest is Rob McEwen, uh, the Chief Executive Director of eVelocity. He runs a charity uh, which um, organizes a program in high schools in which teams of students design and build electric vehicles. They also run New Zealand's only electrical vehicle festival. If this is your first time and you want to learn more how to import and export goods and other business related advice, then start now by subscribing to this channel. Hello, Rob, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Please tell us about your e-velocity. How did you start it? Uh, well, I was involved in economic development in, in the Lake Taupo region. And um, we established uh, something in about 2007 that was called the New Zealand Clean Energy Centre, which was an economic development initiative. And it was a showcase for all things to do with clean energy. And in 2011, uh, we held, um, I think, what was probably New Zealand's first uh, workshop on electric vehicles. And we had uh, quite a few enthusiastic people come along to that workshop, including um, a Japanese father and son who live in Auckland and were associated with the electric vehicle industry in Japan. And uh, following the workshop, they asked me if I'd have an interest in establishing a, a, an industry association in New Zealand, and I said yes. Um, so I was involved in forming uh, what is now Drive Electric, which is an industry association promoting the uptake of electric vehicles. And uh, in 2013, uh, the board of, Dri of uh, Drive Electric came up with the idea of e-velocity. Um, I then wrapped that idea into a business plan, uh, shopped it around New Zealand, looking for sponsors and schools that were interested. And um, we, we launched the program in 2014 in Canterbury with, uh, with 16 teams from 11 schools. And now uh, in 2017, uh, we are in Canterbury, Nelson, Wellington, Waikato and Auckland. And we have over 100 teams of students uh, participating in designing and building their own electric vehicles. And it's, it's, got, a, it's got a double purpose, Max. It's, um, its first uh, purpose is to get more youth interested in engineering because um, New Zealand has a big skill shortage of engineers. And so we thought that, you know, a future focused, this is not my father's car, this is something different um, kind of program would would um, would be appealing to youth, and it has proven to be appealing. Uh, but at the same time as getting them interested in engineering, we want them to learn about the the merits of electric vehicles, uh, both the envir environmental merits and the economic merits, um, and then sharing what they learn uh, with their families and their community, so that you know we're we're, we're driving greater uptake of electric vehicles in New Zealand. Have you been in touch with Elon Musk or Tesla by any chance? Uh, not personally, no. I have had conversations with Tesla, but not Elon Musk. Um, these days, uh, I don't have anything to do with the industry association anymore. What happened was as the schools program uh, started taking off and consuming more and more of my time, I had to make a choice of whether I was going to focus on the, the schools program or divide my time between that and the industry association. And I, I resigned uh, from the association and chose to focus all of my effort on the schools program. I see. So I understand that you import some of your products. Where do you import them? Um, so we, for the actual school teams, we import motor kits from China. They're 300 watt uh, motor kits. Not the same ones that you would find on a commercially available electric bike, uh, but um, very affordable kits, uh, affordable for the schools because obviously schools have very tight um, budgets and so they can't spend a lot of money to uh, participate in programs like ours. Um, so we have to make it as affordable as possible. So we import those kits. But what we have also started doing 
over the last 12 months is importing factory built electric bikes. And these are bikes that are built to our requirements and specifications in China. Um, and we're, we're now bringing those into the country and uh, setting up a distribution network and selling those. And that's all about another funding stream to support what we're doing in schools because up until this point, I've raised all the money for the schools program through grants and sponsorships. And that's great. And we've been very fortunate to have some, some very good sponsors on board. Um, but it's not a sustainable model financially. Um, so I think most charities these days are having to do a similar thing, and that is to find um, sources of revenue outside of grants and sponsorships. And so we've chosen um, to do that by importing, distributing, and selling electric bikes. And all of the net proceeds from the electric bike sales go in to help fund the eVelocity program. Sure. And to our viewers, if you've just joined, feel free to ask any questions during the interview and uh, we'll try to answer them as we go along. Rob, how did you find a supplier? What challenges did you have? Well, actually, the biggest challenge for me was the fact that I had never been an importer before. Um, I've always been in the services sector my entire life. so. I had my own advertising and marketing firm, um, actually in Austin, Texas, for 20 years. Um, and um, and then I've been involved in economic development and other sorts of marketing consulting work. Um, so just um, making that initial leap into, oh, I'm actually going to import something, that was that was a really big challenge, um, more of a mental challenge than anything to, to overcome. Uh, because, you know, your I think your natural tendency is to think, well, I've never done this before, therefore I shouldn't be doing it or I can't do it. Um, but I, I um, so I had to, I had to fight that uh, mental challenge of I can do this. Um, that was the first thing. And then the second thing was, well, how do I go about finding a, a good supplier? And um, I spent about two months doing research on Alibaba, which is the big um, uh, e-commerce shopping site for Chinese suppliers. And um, what I really looked for uh, were a few things. One was, did the, did the supplier have good ratings? Did they have good credentials? You know, had they participated in the um, trade assurance and quality assurance programs? Um, and did they have the style of bikes that I was looking for? Um, and would they supply me in the quantities I was looking for? Because I didn't want to start out by just ordering a full container load, um, not knowing, never having done it before, um, and not knowing anything about the supplier. Uh, so I started off with quite a small quantity, and um, so finding a supplier that would work with me and that would um, allow me to order a number of different um, models for. Um, prototypes and testing and make refinements to those models um, over time, that, that's what I was looking for. I see. So were you confident enough at the beginning or did you have to fly and meet the supplier to see their factory? Um, we, the, we brought the first shipment, which was only 14 bikes in, without ever having met the supplier. Um, and then I thought, okay, um, I got a group of, um, of people together. I live in Taupo, so I invited a, a group of people to come around to my place and have a look at the bikes. Some of them were engineers and, um, and other kinds of tradespeople. And um, just give me their impressions of the, of the welding quality, of the assembly quality, of the feel of the bike when they rode it, that sort of things. And... Um, the, the feedback that I got was really positive, um, uh, especially from the engineers who felt that the bikes, uh, you know, were really well engineered, welded, and assembled. Um, but um, I felt that before I could be confident in taking the next leap, you know, towards ordering a container load of bikes, that I really needed to go to China and meet the supplier firsthand, get to know them. Um, 
get to get to know some of their people, see their factory, develop a personal relationship, um, and and also just um, try and understand whether the factory that I was working with had the kind of culture in their workplace that was um, um, the right sort of culture for me to be able to work with in the longer term. Would you have done it? Um, the, the thing that I have recently done, which I wished I had done perhaps sooner, uh, is uh, when I did go to China, which was in May of this year, um, I, I, I not only visited the supplier, but I went to the Shanghai Bike Fair, which is probably one of the largest bike shows in the world. And um, and I met a couple, uh, he, uh, he's German and she's Chinese, who live in China. And um, they are e-bike specialists and they offered a service of inspecting and testing our bikes in China before, um, wh while they were still on the factory floor before they got um, loaded into the container. And um, I, I wish I had had that service, um, um, you know, uh, for, for my prior shipments, because even though the componentry is great, uh, the frame quality is great, um, in some cases, the people that are doing the assembly on the factory floor um, aren't necessarily as well trained as they should be, or they don't necessarily pay as much attention to what they're doing as they should. And so we have had some assembly related issues that we've had to fix in New Zealand, and we've been able to fix those issues. But now, uh, thankfully, we have uh, a company in China who provides an inspection and testing a service on our behalf, and they're looking at every bike, making sure it has the right components, making sure the components have been installed correctly, and testing every bike before it gets packed into a, a cardboard carton and, and loaded on the container. Sure, sure. How do you uh, promote your company in New Zealand? What was the question, Max? Sorry? How do you promote your company in New Zealand? All oh, right. Okay, so, um, well, of course, we have a website, um, which is uh, mellowyellow.nz, and that's M-E-L-O, just one, one L, and uh, Y-E-L-O, at mellowyellow.nz. Um, so that's, um, that's where people can learn more about what we have to offer. But what we've been doing, um, partly because we're a charity and also partly because I feel that there is um, uh, a unique new distribution opportunity available to us uh, instead of going through bike shops, which is to actually uh, be out and about in various communities um, promoting electric bikes at events and at schools and at clubs and things like that. Um, because what sells an electric bike is when someone gets on an electric bike and takes it for a ride. In 100% of the cases, uh, the person who is riding the electric bike for the first time gets a big smile on their face and they go, wow, this is great. I want one of these. So um, we feel like getting out and about in communities rather than asking people to come to a bike shop is a really good um uh, distribution and sales model. So what we've been doing is we've been recruiting a network of what I call associates. And for the most part, these are retirees or they may be semi-retirees or other people uh, we've had inquiries from students, you know, that have a bit of spare time on their hands, have an interest in the environment, have an interest in cycling, have good do-it-yourself skills. Um, and want to do something that makes a, a positive difference to New Zealand. So um, we're hiring these associates. Um, they come on board. We offer them uh, some marketing training and some technical training. Um, we get them set up with uh, flyers and pennant flags and business cards and so forth. We help them put a marketing plan together for their community. Um, 
and then uh, they get out and about in their community demonstrating the e-bikes and selling the e-bikes on our behalf and they make a they make a commission on the sales and the process and then all of the remaining proceeds from the sale support the e-velocity program in schools i've got a question from alex how do you charge the batteries can you do it yes uh yeah so the batteries are charged um you don't actually have to take the battery off the bike although you can take it off uh, very easily and take it inside um and it comes with a charger um that uh that is a, a four amp uh, charger we we actually use four amp chargers most bike companies use two amp chargers um and it takes um two to three hours to fully charge a battery if it's if it's empty you just plug it in it's just like pl uh, plugging in a laptop it's the exact same kind of charger that most uh, laptops use so you just plug it into a three pin outlet um let it charge um you know the green light comes on when it's fully charged and off you go um i i uh, personally um i i have an e-bike i don't ride it as often as i should uh, but um i could do probably three rides a week on a full charge and that would be three rides of about um you know up to 30 kilometers per ride what what are your thoughts about the environment ethics of e-bikes? Obviously, you don't consume petrol, but I could be wrong. But they say that it costs a lot more to recycle the batteries. Am I wrong, or is there any truth? Um, if you if you look at the an, an electric vehicle, not just a bike, but any electric vehicle. Um, there's actually three aspects to its environmental impact. One aspect is um, uh, the emissions that the actual vehicle is putting out into the atmosphere. So if you're driving a, a petrol car around Auckland, um, you're putting a lot of emissions out into the atmosphere. In fact, a petrol car, this is quite interesting, only 25% of the energy that's in a litre of petrol winds up being uh, converted into motion at the wheels. So 75% of the energy in every litre of petrol is wasted in, um, you know, um, uh, when the car's stopped at traffic lights and drivetrain losses and so forth. Um, an electric vehicle is 90% plus efficient in terms of converting the electric energy into into motion energy. So that's one thing: is is the vehicle producing any emissions? An electric bike is producing zero emissions. The next thing that you look at is uh, what about the fuel that is going into the vehicle? So um, you know, there's a lot of emissions um, associated with producing oil and gas um, uh, in New Zealand. We're very fortunate in that. 85% plus of the electricity on our grid comes from clean renewable sources. So what that means is that um, not only with an electric vehicle in New Zealand do you have zero emissions at the tailpipe or um, at the pedals, um, but you have zero emissions or virtually zero emissions in terms of the, um, the fuel production as well. So the electricity that's fueling the electric bike is 85% from clean renewable sources in New Zealand. And then the final aspect is, yes, what about the, um, you know, production of lithium and copper and things like that that are um, chemicals um, and um, minerals that are used in the production of electric vehicles. Um, in the case of electric cars, again, uh, the Energy Efficiency and Conservation Authority in New Zealand has looked across the entire life cycle of uh, minerals and um, uh, uh, fuel production um, and uh, and emissions at the tailpipe, and they found that with electric cars, the um, the environmental profile is 80% lower than it is with combustion cars. So New Zealand has a great story, and it's primarily because um, so much of the electricity on our grid is clean. Um, there is, uh, you know, there are issues around what happens to 
um, the lithium batteries once they've re reached their end of life. Um, but those issues, um, as more and more lithium batteries are coming on stream, those issues are being dealt with through recycling programs. So, uh, for instance, Nissan Leaf is a very popular 100% uh, electric car. And Nissan came out with a policy where, this was in the US, where they said to owners, when you need to replace your battery pack, it'll cost you $5,500 for the new battery pack, but we'll give you a $1,000 trade-in allowance on your existing battery pack, and we're going to take those existing battery packs and sell them to um, uh, someone who's going to use them for off-grid energy storage. So they have a second life uh, beyond the life that they have and their use for a vehicle. Interesting. Mm. If you've just joined us, feel free to ask any questions during the interview and we will answer them. I've got another question. Uh, Rob, can you read this question? Can you see it? I can, yes. Um, so our main, uh, are the bikes publicly available? The, the answer is yes. Um, increasingly, they are. We, um, we've got our first uh, large container load of bikes arriving in New Zealand in a few weeks. Um, we, we have some inventory already on hand in New Zealand. Um, one of the things that we have found is that, by and large, people prefer to buy from someone in their community, you know. So if we don't have one of our associates in, uh, in their community, then more often than not, the person who wants to buy an e-bike is going to go to um, a bike shop and buy one from there. But um, we just, at the moment, are in the process of expanding our recruitment efforts for associates around New Zealand. We have associates currently in Auckland, Hamilton, Tauranga, Taupo, and uh, Christchurch. And we're looking for associates to join us on a part-time basis in cities and towns outside of those regions uh, who have an interest in becoming sales and service agents for our products. I see. And you have a website, evelocity.co.nz, where people can find more about you and obviously get your bikes, is it correct? Yeah, actually, if you go to evelocity.co.nz, that, that website, which is, uh, which is E-V for Victor, O-L-O-C-I-T-Y, um, if you go to that website, that website is primarily about the program that we run in schools, but there is a link on the homepage to our e-bike shop, and um, the e-bike shop can be reached directly, with, it's got its own website, and that's mellow yellow, M-E-L-O-Y-E-L-O dot -E -E dot nz, or, dot, or just dot nz, actually. Uh, how many bikes do you hope to oh, sell? Oh. See another question popped up there. Um, uh, we we hope next year to sell between three hundred and five hundred bikes. Um, that's uh, that would what that would do for us is that would provide um, about fifty percent of the funding that we need to run our program in schools. Uh, which would be fantastic because what we're really trying to do um, through the sales of electric bikes is um, wean ourselves from dependence on grants and sponsorships to, to support the program. So um, uh, the Mellow Yellow Electric Bike Program is what's called a social enterprise. Um, it's all about um, uh, doing uh, social and community good. And, um, and, and, and in our case, that's all about supporting engineering education in schools. I see. I've noticed that you had some new articles uh, published in some video interviews. How did you get this publicity? Did you have to approach the journalist yourself or did they found you? No, um, typically we've just been found. Um, we one of the things that we do to promote our, our bikes is we go to events. Uh, and in fact, um, one of the more recent events that we went to uh, was in Hamilton a few months ago uh, called the Waikato Show. And um, 
uh, um, our Prime Minister, uh, Bill English, showed up. And uh, we've got a fantastic photograph of Bill English uh, checking out our bikes. But sometimes also at those shows, we get approached by journalists. Um, you know, they might be with a TV station or a radio station or a local newspaper, and uh, they want to know what we're doing. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, the media um, have a positive attitude towards... Um, towards what we're doing because um, it is all about the, the engineering education in schools. So that they, um, they've been supportive of our, of our message. What are you planning to do at the end of this year? Um, well, um, actually, before I answer that, I'll just say that on September the 9th, we're going to have a big exhibit uh, and we're going to be offering test rides of our bikes um, in Auckland at a, at a show that's going to be at the um, Vodafone Event Centre down in Manukau. It's called EV World, which stands for Electric Vehicle World. So that's on the 9th, Saturday the 9th of September. Um, and then the weekend after that will be in Hamilton. We've got, a, we've got the regional finals of our um, Waikato schools competition in Hamilton on the 16th of September and then on the 23rd of September we've got the regional finals of our schools program in Wellington and then um, uh, on the 2nd of December we've got the national finals of our schools program in Christchurch and um, we've had a, a four metre trailer built um, it's all branded up with our mellow yellow uh, signage and we're going to show up at these events with a bunch of electric bikes uh, and some helmets and uh, give people an opportunity to get the electric bike grin and and, um, and hopefully purchase some bikes. Great. What would be your advice, Rob, to people that just starting out to uh, business owners that want to get ahead and uh, build a successful organization like you have? Well, uh, I guess um, it it takes a lot of perseverance so my advice would be you know um just um uh, hang in there and uh and 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 don't be don't be put off by mistakes or failures um you know uh, we we all make mistakes it's a great way to learn um I've, I've i've seen various quotes around that you know that um um you know people like uh you know Einstein, how many mistakes they made before before they came up with their big breakthrough. Um, so um, stick at it and and do your homework. Um, I think uh, you know New Zealand is a great place to be an entrepreneur and an innovator and to launch new products because uh, it's not a huge market. It's not a saturated market. Um, there's there's new opportunities out there every day. Um, and I think the other thing too is that you really have to pick something that you passionately believe in. Um, I passionately believe in electric vehicles um, in, in the general sense uh, and electric bikes. Um, I think they're fantastic solutions for New Zealand um, and for New Zealanders. Um, and uh, if I didn't have the passion uh, of belief, I wouldn't be able to, to do the job that I do. So it's all about finding your passion and then pursuing that and being relentless in the pursuit. 100%. Uh, Rob, can people contact you later if they have any questions? Uh, absolutely, yes. Um, uh, my uh, phone number is 21 728 Eight seven five, um, and um, I can also be reached on email. Um, that's Rob uh, R O B for Bruce dot McEwen, which is M C E W E N. That's N for Nancy at eVelocity.co.nz. So um, absolutely happy. Um, you know we're interested in. Um, promoting our bikes, uh, we're interested in finding associates in, in the regions to uh, help us on our um, distribution journey, uh, and we're interested in any feedback that anyone has that can um, that can help us grow 
um, what we're doing and, and, and get into more schools around New Zealand. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Rob, and uh, to all those people that uh, watched this interview and to those that asked a question, make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you do not miss the next awesome interview. And thanks again, Rob, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Max.